Good morning, everyone. Today, we are finally going to be working on our 20 gallon aquarium wall, uh, the stands in particular. So we're gonna be putting together the stands that these tanks are gonna go on. Uh, the reason why we are going to be going with custom fit stands instead of just what you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, the, the metal rack ones, is because we have metal rack ones. If you remember from the last fish room that we had, we had one big metal rack from Lowe's that cost about $250, $300 or so, and it was a six foot rack, but it didn't quite fit two three foot tanks by just a smidge, like a quarter of an inch. So we're going with custom this time because we want it to be exactly how we want it, both in height, both in width, um, the distance between the racks, that where we can access the tanks for cleaning or getting fish out, putting fish in, in and out of decorations, things like that. Um, and also, because we do woodworking, it's a nice combination of our two hobbies. So we already have all of the tools required to do this job. We already have all of the knowledge. We just had to come up with what design we were gonna go for. And the design we're gonna go for is actually going to be the dado cut fish rack build. And I'll get more into that on why we chose the dado version instead of just screwing the wood pieces, the horizontals onto the verticals and what have you, which that would work as well, just not quite as sturdy uh, for my liking. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And I was going to make this like a montage video where we just knock it out in just a few minutes, but because of the lack of expertise that I see on YouTube, there's some great videos out there, don't get me wrong, um, but there's also some videos out there that tell you how to just do the bare basic fish tank uh, assembly, and those ones are not gonna be very strong. They'll probably still support the weight of the tank you're putting on it, but if you were to put a bigger tank on some of these racks that I've seen, it would come crashing down. So we're gonna do it the right way. We're gonna do it the dado cut method, and if you don't know what a dado cut is, stay tuned. We will dive into that and we'll teach you. So let's jump into it. All right, so starting off, this is typically pretty straight, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on the chop saw. Not this one, that one, uh, or miter saw, however you wanna define it as. Uh, and I'm just gonna chop literally like an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, just to ensure that this is a 100% perfectly smooth flat bottom to our two by four plank. So all of our verticals are going to be made out of two by, or sorry, two by sixes. This is a two by six. And all of our horizontals and braces are gonna be made out of two by fours. So a reason being a two by six obviously is two inches bigger than a two by four. Therefore it is stronger each one of these vertical two by sixes, again, we could do it with two by fours. That's perfectly fine. This is probably overkill, but why not overkill? You know, you might as well be as safe as possible. So each one of these two by sixes will support about 1200 pounds of vertical pressure each. So because there's going to be two of them at every four joint section, we're going to be able to support 2400 pounds every four feet. And there's only going to be two tanks on each rack, three racks high. So a 20 gallon tank is about 200 pounds when fully filled, 400 pounds per rack, three racks high, you're talking 1200 pounds. So this is more than double what it can support. And this is only one side of the four legs that it's going to have per section. So two by sixes is what we use for verticals. Let's go ahead and get these dado cut. So this is your typical saw blade. This is what you think of when you're doing a table saw or when you're thinking of a table saw. However, this is a dado blade, which essentially is two saw blades and then sandwiched between what are called chippers. So they're essentially also saw blades, but they're not quite a blade. They're just got two chippers on each end. So you alternate them within the two blades, creating just a massive thick blade, essentially. So everything that is between these two saw blades on the end here is going to get chipped out. 
and that will create your dado cut. So I don't have a plate to put in my table saw because this plate is only good for a standard blade. So unfortunately I do have to leave this open face, but as long as you're careful, it's not an issue at all. So I got these all marked off and I know exactly where my dados are gonna go. So this is my just shy of three and a half inch gap. And this is where I'm gonna cut the dado between these two lines. And then 24 inches, another dado. And then 24 inches, another dado. I think I actually don't need that one. I just need top bracket, the middle, and then I'm gonna do one at the very bottom. And then that's what the uh, entire stand is gonna sit on. But yeah, let's put this on the table saw and start cutting dados. Uh, you can cut dados with this contraption that I showed you earlier. You can also do it with the single saw blade. It's just obviously gonna take a lot more cuts, but you can do the same thing with a normal saw blade. This will just get it done a lot quicker. That's all it is. So you don't need a special dado blade set. Uh, it just makes the process a little faster is all. So it's going really well. It's like a perfect fit for the two by four. Very, very snug fit. It's actually gonna need to be wedged in with a hammer is how snug it is. So it's good. However, the thing I don't like about it is because I'm chunking off such a wide area that's probably about three quarters of an inch at a time, I am getting a little bit of chip out. And I don't like that because the more chip out you get, the less weight you get to put on it too. So I might actually revert back to the single blade saw and possibly at least cut the edges, like one or two cuts on each edge, and then come back to the dado and then do all the middle section with the dado because if, it, if I get the uh, edges cut to size, if there's any chip out, it won't exceed uh, outside of the dado. So I might, I might do that. I might switch back to the single blade saw and then come back and do the dados. Let's do that. So this is another way you can make a dado cut using just a singular saw blade, which most people will have if they do have some kind of a, a tail saw, they'll have the single, not the dado set. Uh, you just make your first and last incisions and then you just keep slicing in between. It doesn't matter how thick because all you're going to do is you're going to be taking a wood chisel or a screwdriver or something along those lines and just get it between and just kind of start pushing them around to break them off. And then once you've got them all broken, you should just be able to kick them out. And then those little bits that are left, you can continue to take your chisel and you could just start chiseling them out to smooth them out, smoothen them out. So that's another way you can make a dado cut without the need of a full blown dado set because that would run you 50, 60, 80, $100 or so. So if you just have the single saw blade, do this method. We got all of our dado cuts. That's gonna be the bottom rack, tank, middle rack, tank, top rack. And then because this tank is gonna be on the very top, I decided to give it about one foot, 12 inches. Um, so that way the tanks can't fall off the sides, but it's not gonna go all the way up the tank because the tank is 16 inches high and this is only 12 inches. So it's gonna be about three fourths up the tank or so. Um, but that's fine because the purpose of leaving this part on instead of just stopping it right here on that top rack is so that way the tanks don't fall off, tanks don't move, they're, they're set in place. So leaving that there, but yep, three racks and they're all perfectly in line. So we're gonna go ahead and start chopping up these boards, which are going to be not only the horizontals, but also the ones that lay in between the tanks to keep the tanks um, on as well because these are going to be the front and back support or sorry no these are going to be the vertical supports the horizontal ones that are going to be going inside of these dados are going to be the front and back supports and then we're also going to chop uh little sections the width of the tank that side um so that way the tanks can sit side to side so that way the tanks are covered on all four uh sides of the tank. We don't need to have a board, like we don't need to have a board for the tanks to sit on because the tanks are only really putting pressure on that outside rim. So as long as you have the support on the outside rim, 
that's all the tank needs. No point in adding extra wood, extra costs, uh, extra weight. So yeah, let's go ahead and size these up and start chopping up those and then we'll start screwing the whole thing together. We have our verticals with the dado blade cuts. We have our horizontals and we have our studs. So, or not studs, our supports. So let's give everything a quick sanding and God, this fish room is messy. I'm glad we're getting this done before we have fish with the exception of the shrimp, unfortunately. We got too excited on that. So let's give everything a quick sand. Uh, we're gonna sand it again once it's all put together, but before we start putting it together and get any splinters and whatnot, we're gonna give everything just a, just a quick once over and smoothen it out a little bit. Time to assemble everything. So, I'm gonna take the verticals and I'm gonna lay them flat on the ground. I still have to measure it. it. I know it's not evenly spaced right now, but I'm gonna evenly space on our 103 and a half inch board. So that way this should be 49 and a half inch gap between these two boards and then another 49 and a half inch gap between these two boards. So let's go ahead and measure it out and screw it together. And then once we get this one in, we'll go into the next one, go to the next one, and then we'll do the other three, which is the other side of the rack. And then once we have both sides put together, then we'll just start putting in the supports uh, in the middle and she'll be done. Okay, that took a while. This is one side of this done. So I gotta do this whole thing basically again and then basically sandwich them together with the, with the supports. But that was a lot of bending over, that sucked. But this at least is a really nice visual of what this is going to look like. So if this is the front of the tanks or the front of the stand rather, you're gonna have two tanks here, two, 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 every single one of these horizontals. It's gonna have two 20 gallon high tanks on it. And the top of the tank will be about right here, which will give us about seven to eight inches worth of working room between the top of the tank and the bottom of the next rack. We're also going to have a little bit of uh, bonus room above because we're not gonna have a solid sheet of wood across the bottom of that next rack. It's gonna be rather open. Um, we are going to be putting foam on the bottom of all the tanks, so I'm not going to be able to like come up and puncture the glass or anything like that. But we are going to be giving ourselves about another three inches worth of working room behind all of the supports and the horizontals and whatnot. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and flip this up and put, up on the, uh, put it up on the wall, and then we'll go ahead and put the other one together. Alrighty, this is what it's going to look like. It is going to be very, very thin, like this way thin, because these are only 20 gallon tanks and they're only a foot wide. So it's only gonna be a foot. Like we discussed, it's gonna be like 13 inches wide. So the thing to do next is get these supports. The sawhorses are right there because these cannot stand up on their own. They are not attached at all. So they can just flop on over. So we gotta attach the supports. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in one right here, two in the middle, which we could probably get away with one, but I'm going complete overkill, because you know, why not? It's 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 your fish tanks, why not go overkill? 
and then another one on each end. So those four are going to be in all aspects of this stand. So let's go ahead and start attaching our supports. There she is, fully assembled. Whew, that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to and getting those bottom screws was also a lot of bending over. This is only one of four, maybe even five racks. This is half of the actual 20 gallon wall. Whew, but there's still a little bit of work to do on it. I still need to sand uh, the whole thing and smooth it out. I need to make sure that these are completely smooth so that way the tank sits completely flush. So I need to sand it all out now that it's on it. And then I want to um, maybe stain it, uh, at least at the very minimum, I need to put a lacquer on it because this is wood and we're dealing with wet aquariums. When we drip water, I don't want the wood to warp. Um, I want it to last as long as possible. So we're going to be putting the, a lacquer on this entire thing to at least waterproof it a little bit and make it last as long as it possibly can. So for now, I'm gonna put this one to the side because we need to start on the electrical work. And once the electrical is in, then we'll be able to crank out the rest of these stands. And like I said, get the sanding, get the lacquer, get the outlets. It's, it's coming together. It's coming together for sure. Temporary storage just to get them off the ground and out of the way so that way we can do the electrical. But dang, does that look good. Oh, once we get all the tanks painted black, I like this probably the sides as well because now I kind of don't like that you can see the uh, the wood through the sides. So probably gonna also be painting the sides of these black. But yeah, I like that rack. I like it a lot. This is starting to become a much longer project than I thought it would take. I thought this would go by pretty quick, but it's it's going to take several days. This stand took me an entire day to build. And then we did all of this electrical work. So we did a, a conduit. So I have a four outlets over here. And then on that same circuit, another four outlets plugged into this box, which is on its own circuit. So that'll give us 20 amps. And then I have another one that's going up to the ceiling for another four outlets also on its own circuit of 20 amps. So this one right here is going to power the rack that we're gonna have in the middle for all of our large tanks. And then these wall outlets, in addition to the outlets that already exist, are going to fill the 20 gallon wall. So the electrical work took all uh, one full day as well. And uh, yeah, I'm exhausted at this point. And unfortunately we had to move the shrimp from here over to here so that way we can work on the electrical. So now I feel like I have to move the shrimp again from here probably over on this wall now that this is out of the way and we don't need to access this electrical box for a few days. Move all the shrimp over here so that way we have an area that we can work on and build our next set of stands because if we build the other half of the 20 gallon wall then I feel like we can do the work of um, staining, putting on the lacquer, the sanding and screwing in the lights, mounting everything, and actually getting that set up on the wall so we can get all these tanks out of the way too. I put the tanks on there temporarily, so that way they just get out of the way because they were sitting right here in a big pile. But having them take up the space on the rack itself, it just clears space in the garage. So I'm thinking our next move is to build the second half of that stand. But in order to do that, I gotta move the shrimp and then move that tank up against the wall. That'll give me this entire area to work in, build the second half, and then start sanding, staining, painting, lacquering. Yeah. Oh, and this is only gonna be one stand. And then we still have to do the entire stand in the middle, which that might have to wait a week because I'm getting exhausted at this point. So let's go ahead and move some stuff around and try to finish the stand. Uh, I didn't film any of the electrical work, by the way, just because we were novices and we didn't know what we were doing at all. Um, and also we just wanted to get it done. So sorry on that one. Maybe we'll do some electrical videos in the future, but for now, we got the electrical in. Let's keep working on these stands. 
you really don't think about how long it takes to move stuff around in the garage. This took about two hours and that was just to get the uh, four shrimp tanks from the middle of the garage over to here. So I got my two right here and then another two on this side just to get them up and out of the way. Now that we're done with the electrical, I can shove stuff relatively up against the electrical. I can still access the panel if I want to. So it's not blocking anything, but yeah, this should be enough room for me to get to work on the next rack. So once I finish the next rack and we get that all put together, then I'm gonna paint the tanks in the middle of the garage. This central area is pivotal to the operation. I need as much room as possible. So I'm gonna be dealing with a lot of these eight foot boards, the 10 foot boards. So I, I need as much room as possible. Probably gonna shove this cart up against the corner. And then the only thing I'm gonna have left to do is I'm gonna have to take all of these tanks off of our uh, first rack, put them somewhere, so that way I can move this rack over to that wall temporarily, and then probably put all the tanks back on it just to get them out of the way, just sim simply for storage, simply to get them out of the way. And that's so that way I can get to my wood for building the next rack, because I kinda, kinda buried the wood behind the rack. So yeah, the next thing to do is to take these tanks down, move the rack, put the tanks back up, and then I can access my wood. And then we'll start building the next rack, which is gonna look very similar to this one, just with the exception of these four tanks are not going to be here. We're still gonna be running our long board across the bottom, long board across the middle, but then this one over here, uh, the left middle will be like a workbench kind of thing, cause it's gonna be what goes right next to the sink. And then that top part is just not gonna exist. So we're just gonna have the top two tanks over here. So let's get to work.